Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the later Mughals. Up till now we have already studied the later early Mughals and Jakhand Bukhari. Now in this period we are going to study about the later Mughals. In that we are going to study three important points. In that first one is the reasons behind the or the factors behind the decline of the Mughal Empire. Second one is the, the emergence of regional policies and third one is the, the factors responsible for the independent states. So let us begin with the presentation. So from this PPT, you will get the brief idea about today's topic. In that, first one is the factors responsible for the decline of Mughal Empire. Students, as we have already studied in the last chapter that mighty Mughal Empire was having a great history. And why, what was the reason for the decline of the Mughal Empire that we are going to st uh, study in this particular point. The first point from that is the economic crisis. Second, weak administration. Third one is the revolts of peasants, foreign invaders. Then, rebelling among the nobles, Mughal tradition of successors, and last one is the arrival of the Britishers. Then, next point, sub point, is the emergence of the regional power. In that, we are going to study about the Rajputs, the Sikhs, the Jats, and the case study of the Marathas. And the last point is the rise of independent states. In that, we are going to see Hyderabad, Awadh, and Bengal. So let us begin with our first point, that is the economic crisis. So first and the most important factor was the economic crisis. As you know, during the period of Aurangzeb, Mughal Empire had already reached its zenith of, the, of their power and had conquered almost whole of the India. But the death of Aurangzeb had left a wave of partition among the three surviving sons, but all the three entered into conflicts for the position of the throne, and this endless wars and long torn decay campaign duplicated the financial and the military sources of the empire. Then the next point was the weak administration. During the weak and incompetent letter Mughals empire, the administration was neglected and even laws and orders broke down in various parts of the empire. And because of that, it became difficult for them to keep a check on their mansabdas. Governors began to extract maximum revenue from the peasants. And due to this, the peasants and the zamindars got frustrated and they have started revolts against the Mughal rulers. Then our next point is the revolts of peasants and zamindars. As you know, the increased tax on peasants and zamindars made them rebellious. Like many revolts broke out in the part of northern and western India, they now they were now able to seize the resources of the region to strengthen their position that ultimately led to the shift in the political and economic authority into the hands of the governor and various others group. And due to this, soon the Mughal, Mughal Empire gradually fragmented into a number of religious groups or states, then foreign invaders. Nadir Shah, the ruler of Persia, plundered the city of Delhi in 1739 C. Ahmad Shah Abdali, the ruler between 1748 C and 1761 C, became the Mughal Empire considerably. And this results the mighty Mughal Empire reduced to a small district among Delhi. Then the next point is rivalry among the nobilities. The nobility was divided into two major groups namely the Iranians and the Turanians. Letter Mughals were mere puppet in their hand. Then the next point is the Mughal tradition of succession. Students, as you know, from the period of Humayun to Aurangzeb, the Mughals were getting success. 
One by one, they captured almost all part of India. And this was the Taimur tradition from dividing the inheritance among all the sons. But in case of the death of the emperor was followed by the conflicts over the succession among the climates to the throne. Then the next point is arrival of the British. Though the Britishers have taken the permission to establish the first factory at Surat by Jahangir, but now they become more powerful and even they got to know about the weakness of the Mughals. And that is nothing but the conflicts among the brothers for the succession and already weakened Mughal empire received a struggling blow with the arrival of the British. By 1765, the Britishers had brought major tremendous of Eastern India under their control and soon emerged as the master of the India. And similar way, the blow of the rise of new independent states has also been started. Now, the rise of new independent states from that first point is the Hyderabad. Chinkulaj Khan, better known as Nizam ul Mulk Asab Jahan, was one of the most powerful noble in the court of Firukshia, who appointed him as the governor of the Deccan. As a governor of the provinces, he had a complete control over the political and financial administration. And by taking the advantage of the disturbed situation, he became the de facto ruler of the Deccan. And he established his independent rule of Deccan with Hyderabad at as its capital. And lastly, he died at the age of 91 years. Then the next point is the founder of the Avan. Similar way, like Chin Kunich Khan, Burhan Ul Mulk Sadat Khan also grabbed the opportunity and declared Avad as an independent state because Avad was a rich and a prosperous region that controlled the Ganga plain and the main trade routine between Bengal and the North India. Even he managed the political affairs, financial affairs and the military affairs of Avad. And then he undertook several steps to reduce the Mughal influence in Avad. That is, he prevent in Prevent the cheating of collecting the tax by Jagir's, by Jagir Das. He reduced the size of lands given as Jagir's to the Jagir Das. Burhan ul Mulk was succeeded by his son, Jahan, by his son, Sadab Jam, and he established peace and order in Awal. Bengal. By snatching the opportunity, Murshid Kuli Khan established Bengal as an independent state and he shifted his capital from Dhaka to Murshidabad. By keeping economic interest in his province in the mind, he carefully managed his revenue and increased his finance after, after his son. He was succeeded by his son-in-law, Sujauddin Khan, during his region the Bihar Subha as annexed to the Malwa. Emergence of the new states. When the Mughal Empire, Empire's authority declined, the governor of the large province Subedars and the great Zamindars consolidated their authority in different parts of the continent. Subcontinents during the 18th century, Mughal Empire gradually fragmented into a number of independent regions or states. From that, first we are going to see about the Rajputs. As we have already studied about the Rajput policies of Akbar, according to that, the policy, the Mughals have given good position to the Rajput kings and in the return, they enjoyed considerable autonomy in their Vatan Jagals. Even the chief of the Ambed and Malwa played a significant role in the politics at the Mughal court, and the Rajputs 
have grabbed the opportunity and established their political supremacy. In that, Raja Ajit Singh of Malwa functioned as the governor of Ajmer and Gujarat, and Jai Singh II of Amber was appointed as the governor of Surat. However, this revival of Rajput has temporary Temporarily, the Marathas campaigns into Rajasthan lead to the decline of Rajputs. Then, the next was the Sikhs. The, or the organization of Sikhs into political entity in the 17th century helped in religious states building in Punjab. The rise of the Sikhs as a separate religious entity began with the Guru Nanak. The basic religion behind this was the ill treatment given by the Mughals to the Sikhs. Guru Tej Bahadur protest against certain regimes policies of Aurangzeb results in the execution. His successor, Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Sikh Guru, transferred the Sikh community into the warrior community and also established the Khalsa or the Brotherhood or the Sikhs who become a highly military entity. Then, Next is Jats. Jats, the leader of Chauraman. Jats, the weak successor of Aurangzeb, gave, also gave Jats opportunity to explore the situation. They consolidated their power and established themselves as an independent entity. Under the leadership of Chauraman, the Jats acquired control over the territories situated to west and west of the Delhi. Then, Badam Singh, a nephew of Chauraman, who established his authority over almost the whole of Agra and Mathura district. The Jat Kingdom reached its zenith under Badam Singh's adopted son and successor, Surajma. When we talk about the Marathas, we cannot forget the work and the devotion of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. He was born to Shahaji Bhosle and Jezabai in 1636. Shivaji's great uprising was to create a, an independent kingdom. His earliest military successor records were when he captured many forts near Pune, Raigad, Kondana, Turan. His successful career came to end with his death. After his death, Shivaji was succeeded by his eldest son, Sambhaji, but gradually the efforts control of the Maratha kingdom passed into the hands of the Peshwas. Then Balaji Vishwanath was the first Peshwa and his successor not only played an important role in the expansion of the Maratha dominions, but also made the Marathas powerful the strongest. The Maratha king secured the rights to collect taxes such as Choth and Sardeshmukhi. From the, from the entire region, the growth of Maratha empire made other wizards hostile, make other hostiles towards them. As a result, none of this power support them in the third battle of Pani, which caused a humiliating defeat for the Marathas and gradually the Peshwa started losing control. The administration of the Marathas, it was founded by Shivaji by the it was founded by Shivaji for the sound system of administration, which was greatly inspired from the Deccan style of administration. In this, he introduced the Ashtapradhans, means the eight council ministers. Here are the Ashtapradhans. First one is the Preshwa, it means the prime minister. Then the Nayadish. Nayadish look after the judicial affairs. Then Amatya, he looks after the financial officers. Then comes Sachibs royal concern or royal conspirators. Then, man, then comes Mantri, the private secretary of the king. 
than Pandit Rao, religious and charitable activities. He look after the religious and the charitable activities. Then Sumantas. Sumantas are the foreign affair ministers. Then Senapati. Senapati looks after the military affairs of the state. So students, here we have studied about the Mughal Empire after 